so setting up the Caldwell Ballistic Precision Prime Graph is easy. It takes about two minutes. And there's the cord connected to the iPad and we'll go ahead and set this up for the shooting station at the next target change. So there's the chronograph all set up and the app all connected. So shooters and reloaders, today we're going to test the 44 Special using matched brass first. This is federal brass, 7.5 grains of universal powder with a 240 grain silhouette. Belt. And we're going to shoot. We're going to shoot the matched brass first. Then we're going to shoot mixed brass to see if if the matched brass and mixed brass has any difference. Well, that load shot very well with the matched brass. Let's see what the chronograph says. Well, you can see there that the average velocity was 1,212 feet per second, standard deviation of 8.8. .8. Spread of 21 feet per second. That's a pretty good load. And again, thanks to Dave Thorzak's 777 for that mold. That's a great mold, great bullet. So shooters and reloaders, now that I've used the Caldwell Ballistic Precision Chronograph, I can just simply say uh, this is a fine chronograph. And I've used uh, four other chronographs in the past. This one is really a nice current chronograph. It does everything that we shooters need. It uses a cord, which if you use the length of the cord, it puts it out there the right distance away for us to use. Although I would think that that distance makes it very vulnerable to shotgun wads and sabos that would break this. So if we're shooting shotgun wads, perhaps uh, have it closer. But perhaps even a better thing is not to use shotgun wads or sabos with our chronographs. But doesn't matter. This is a fine unit. It's not heavy. It's handy. It's easy to hold and mount on a tripod. Works out very well. By the way, the deluxe version, the tripod is uniformly regarded as being very cheaply made and not worth the, uh, the cost, the extra cost to have that because we can get better tripods for less money. The sky screens, at first I thought they were a little, little bit on the flimsy side, especially when you look at these supporting rods are just very narrow and seems like they bend easily but they really aren't that bad and they work very well they do their job and when you want to put it back together you simply go like this and like that snap and you're right there and to take it apart you simply bend the center and then you simply pull up pull it out like this so it works out very well and again to put it back together simple it takes about two minutes to put the chronograph together, two minutes to take it apart. Now one of the criticisms of the chronograph was this on-off switch. Because when you want to turn it on to feet per second, you go like this. And you see there it is. It reads feet per second. But the criticism was that when you wanted to turn it off, a lot of times you would overshoot the off and go over to the meters per second and it'd be running and then when you come back to the chronograph later on the battery's dead. Well really if there it is it's off. 
there it is, it's on. You want to turn it off, one click. Uh, so that's an individual criticism. I don't find that to be a problem. And I don't think it's a uniform uh, type of uh, criticism, a negative review on this chronograph. It really isn't a problem. The suggestion was, if you didn't like it, you could put a piece of tape over here to stop it from going over the meters by mistake. But again, I don't think that's a problem. Watch this. It's on. It's off. I didn't have to look at that to do that. I did have one criticism, and that is this carrying bag, which actually is pretty handy. It does a very good job carrying it, but it doesn't do a very good job protecting the unit. Because it's easy to swing this around, and it offers zero protection. There's no padding at all, so this gets banged a little bit. Now, if we compensate by doing a little bit extra careful handling, then no problem. But if we had a, a nice uh, plastic carrying box to keep this in, that would be good. And if, and if that raised the cost $5, that'd be worth it. But again, this can be compensated for by extra careful handling. And uh, I did that to the range today. Well, I found out the best way to load the bag. And that is, you wind up, you wind up the cord like this. And you put the cord into this little scalloped out area like this. So when you load it into the bag, the cord is in that recess. And it'll go in very nicely like you see here. There it is. Then it's a simple matter to take the sky screens and put the side that has the rods away from the chronograph and, and slip it in underneath the chronograph where it's all smooth down there and just slip it right in like this. Then you tighten the drawstring and they have a real nice little closure here. And you've got it packed. So that's the best way to pack it. You see that? Then when you carry it, you get a little bit of protection because if you bump it, you might bump the sky screens but then again, bumping this is not a good policy because there's no padding at all. Unless this had some padding, it, uh, the bag is just that, a carrying bag and zero protection. But the real beauty is the app that runs on your iPad or iPhone or other type of phone. And the connecting cord is a little bit of bother, but not that much. If it were Bluetooth, it would be even better, but then you got extra cost. So I'll go with the wire, it's fine. And it's nice because it has that library of bullets for factory bullets that you can just go ahead and plug right in. And if you don't have that for your cast bullets, you simply make a notation as to what your cast bullet is, any kind of notation you want for yourself. In this case, it's Marlin 1894 with the cut rifling, shooting the .430 bullets, and this is the second group with that particular bullet. And then, when you go ahead and shoot the shots, the shots show up immediately. There's almost no lag at all. And if you shoot fast, it'll go ahead and keep up with you. So that's very nice. And of course, all the information is, is a running count on the average high low the spread and then the standard deviation it just keeps it for every shot you can see these numbers change now you can enter group size but what I didn't use was the actual tie-in for a photo you could actually take photos of your target and include it in in this so I didn't use that feature, but you certainly could. I can see myself using that in the future. I use video, and I've got to see if video will work with this. If not, the photo is still a good way to go to uh, record your groups instead of bringing your targets back. So that's a nice feature. And here is a tabulation of all the groups that I shot today, including all the data um, of all the, the loads. So this is nice. And on the side would be the pictures of the targets if you took photos. So that's another good feature also. 
So all in all, I think you'll find that this is a very useful instrument for your reloading and the beauty of it is by having a chronograph and being able to determine your standard deviations you can really understand how consistent your loading techniques are plus how consistent your ammo is. So shooters and reloaders out there take care and uh, good shooting to you. Bye for now.